Hello, can someone hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, Sven. Hi. So, yeah, you get about five minutes. Um, yeah, I, cool. keep, uh, I shut out the last talk by um, letting, letting, them know, letting everyone know that you'd be up next. Mm, when I'm when I'm putting these slides on full screen, I'm not able to see the chat, right? Uh, <laughs> at least I didn't find a solution right uh, until now. But um, just to mention it, that um, after 50 minutes I come back, otherwise uh, you have to talk. So don't write to me and you have to uh, talk to me if something's wrong, okay? Yeah, you, you have 15 minutes. Um, I, I will obviously interrupt if, if you drop off, but the hard part is some it has been where people have some speakers have been lost with audio and then okay. continue to talk so you know if you want to say hey can you hear me i'm sure um if, if you have any doubt um, <laughs> uh, I'm, sure, doubt. <laughs> exactly. I'm sure it would be helpful but i mean <laughs> your, your talk uh, your talk i believe is only um 15 minutes so i mean like yes you know um, we should all be, I mean, I'm sure there's, um, I'm sure there's enough time, you know, you'll have little moments to check and see if we're still there. Sure, sure. <laughs> That's because nobody is saying anything. <laughs> uh, we're just waiting for the whole hour, but um, well, we might we might start. I one minute is uh, the beginning is. Uh, it's up to you. Anyway, yeah, let's start. Let's start. Come on. And I have one minute for questions. <laughs> okay, can you see the slides? Yeah. Okay. So it's about the ODF toolkit. And uh, first to myself, um, as I said yesterday, it was my 21 year anniversary because on the 5th of October I started Star of December. And um, I'm, well, the maintainer of TD, TDF ODF toolkit, meaning there's no real maintainer, but it's, um, I was responsible at Sun for the ODF toolkit, um, or the ODF DOM, and I'm, I'm, I'm still clung to it. and. Um, since a few months, I'm, I'm editor of DC, uh, uh, similar to Michael Stahl, and also co-chair uh, since last month. And um, you might know this year from the ODF toolkit, we used this uh, recently for validating the ODTs from the specification and found some errors, and uh, Michael um, and I fixed them. Um, they should be online so far, I believe. 
And um, the fourth set of scenarios that have been covered by the audio toolkit is a side of the ODF validator. Um, there's a web archive you can create and you can um, install it easily local, what I'm doing on the Tomcat, for instance. Um, oh, you can use the ODF validator.org as well. And you can use it like a LibreOffice in regression tests um, by Java command line. And uh, I fixed it that you can use the Y as well. So, and um, then there's some called XLT runner. There's just, um, you can run XLT directly on the OD uh, ODF files without unzipping them. And the core part is the ODF DOM, which we used, uh, which is was, was created in the beginning of uh, 2000 by Sun and IBM, um, putting the uh, Sun started and uh, IBM joined, just to their customers working just on the server, just on a few things, and don't want to use a full a LibreOffice. And that was just, uh, so it's erased. And um, it's just like, a, it's no rendering layout, it's just uh, altering editing by API. And uh, the common use cases are data expressions like point translation, when you exchange the text, or uh, data insertion, that's most often the case where you have a template and um, certain patterns should be exchanged with data from databases. And since 1.0, um, um, which is on the master's piece, I haven't done the releases yet, um, is the coloration on ODT. It's, um, um, Yes, it was the back end of the web office from Open Exchange, for instance, that they forked I reach out to. And to tell more about the architecture, it's um, uh, the ODF DOM is being created by a um, by a source code generator, and the ODF validator uses ODF DOM. So does the XLT runner to do the trick to to access the XML to be translated and. Uh, there was a fork, a simple API from IBM that's been deprecated in 1.0. It's out in 0.0, it's deprecated now. And um, unfortunately, um, they uh, IBM never um, rejoined. I mean, yeah, they're not active and it's so much duplicated code, it's not worth it. And we have to take parts which are useful back to the audio from high layer. And so the source code generator, um, I mentioned yesterday, the specification is like a blueprint. And um, it has, for instance, the side of the specification, the ODT document is also a grammar. And this grammar has 18,000 lines of text. And there's a lot of XML and attributes um, that ODF DOM has been created on. ODF DOM basically is a DOM tree, but it's a type DOM tree. So there's a it's, it's text P element, and you have special um, API that belongs to a paragraph. So it should ease the usage um, of ODF without knowing much about the schema. Um, and to, to read this, um, the multi-schema validator is being used, um, which was once done by Sun. And um, yeah, I'm I'm planning to take this over into the TDF as well, uh, because it's not um, had been not updated, and I'm still working on this. Um, and the last thing, um, there's also some work in ODF one on it's in the to 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 have a graph um, built up from the schema, um, and. It's not completed through velocity, so use the multi-schema validator and not Tinkerbell, but that's what I'm doing. Um, and the velocity is some in the, the, the open source project to, um, is a template engine where we create Java source. We, we generate Java source files and um, creating and, and filling them with the data from, from the ground. So that's um, the basic trick here. Um, what the architecture is, um, the ba package API is based on the ODF 1.3 part 2. Currently it's still 1.2, but I have to update it soon. Um, and the XML layer is, is based on the, it's always a different ODT document, so part 3, the schema. And um, the last thing, the schema layer, is what I mentioned yesterday, is missing yet. And we should do this in, in the uh, ODF specification to have a high level view on things um, because the users know what a table is and what a paragraph is and even more interesting they know how to change it like it's very common that people want to um, insert a row or insert a column but it's not specified and um, there's no no interoperability on these changes and um, this semantic high level view and the changes should be added and uh, this is like work in progress so what's this oh yeah um, this is blue here, strange, but um, the future goal is basically that um, this semantic high-level API, this is the 
the, the user don't have to care about XML. He just has to care about how we implement it, but he just wants to Does go high level like, oh, I want to open a text document and uh, take the second paragraph and make the fourth to seventh character bold. Uh, something like this, yes. And um, currently it's a lot of opening content XML and um, yeah, many, many detailed things. It, it should be um, more high level. So and the semantic is not new. When I started in um my first job was to, for the first web, a web office, to write a, a viewer from ODF. Currently, it was not ODF at the time. There was um, Open Office XML. Um, yes, um, because Microsoft changed it. I was confused. Office Open XML, they, they tricked it um, by changing this naming. And um, I transformed certain semantics like uh, the table and the list and an image into HTML. And this is the same XLT that's still being used by um, the LibreOffice export filter and for the transformation of the OD specifications HTML stuff. So that was the first step. And the second step a few years later was when they realized a viewer is not enough, but we have to do it both ways. So it's time. Um, it doesn't work with Excel team, which is a pity. So we had to use Java and we transformed back and forth HTML. But still, um, the web editor uses a full document that would be in exchange. And um, this is not very clever for having a web office that needs collaboration. So um, just to just tell you about uh, collaboration in a nutshell, the most important question is like software development or if you if you exchange anything of work and you collaborate something, you call the other guy up and ask, hey, what have you changed? And because you need to merge it. In the end, you want to have one instance, okay? Um, so how we do it? And um, the th interesting thing is, um, there's a view on a document, like it's a shock frozen document of the state, but uh, we implemented something that transforms something being a document, ODT, into a list of changes. Like if the user would create the document from top down, um, step by step. Um, and this was sponsored by Prototype Fund that, um, that's being um, added to the, um, uh, brought to, um, to the ODF toolkit. It, and it's like a black box, like a compiler, where you put in one side the ODT document and get changes out. And at the same time, you can um, put new changes in that can be same document and with new changes, or you can apply the changes um, to the existing document and get a change document out. So this is like both ways here, yes? And um, you can do the same thing. Um, you can test it pretty easily if you download the ODF Jump Jar uh, you can see here the um, the link, but I linked the audio from Java. Um, and if you have something like JDK 9 or later, you can use this jar with all inclusive and put as a parameter any ODT and get a, as an output on the command line all changes. And um, this is something where uh, we can find some, um, first of all, some, some synergies. But first of all, some naming here. The ODF change is like a user change that a that's coming from a user change that a user does on the GUI, like he's changing, um, inserting a table or inserting a, a row. That are the common changes that any rich text um, editor is offering or any ODF application. But it can be, um, as you've seen earlier, a serialized JSON API call. And to me, this ODF semantic is equivalent to ODF feature. So we have ODF feature within the grammar and ODF spec because the ODF no, specification no, explains then, okay. all the new know. features, all the features that um, that ODF applications can implement. And the ODF feature is then in an ODF document and is still supported by an ODF applications. So it's across all three um, yeah, layers or different silos. And now I have a, a proposal for the for the LibreOffice team um, where I can see synergies. And um, that's in feature testing because um, I'm testing ODF DOM by itself because I put a document in and get changes out. Yes. And these changes I apply um, in, on an empty document. Yes. So, um, and I get then an ODF out document, which should be the same as the ODF in document. Yes. And usually I put this ODF out again into changes and compare them the change because it's easier. So this here is similar to in document to changes and apply them 
as plus meaning apply and yellow means using ODF DOM and get an ODF out document, yes. So we might do the same thing with LibreOffice and um, changes on LibreOffice and then the API to get an OD, uh, ODF document out. And um, we can do this as well, similar to Puppeteer for Chromium, to have a, if there's any GUI tool um, to, and there is, I believe, um, to get an ODF out. The difference is that the changes like a common common language, common interface to um, to glue this together. And the funny thing is you you see, you can apply changes simply by saving them as a document and apply them. Um, it's very easy to apply a test to a GUI uh, because it's, yeah, the, the API calls are the document. So, um, I rushed through it. And what I've forgotten, <laughs> I realized when I started, is the slides um, about the releases. I am, I worked, so wait, I come back to the chat now. Yes. <laughs> so I've got four minutes, that's cool. Um, regarding the releases, I spent about seven weeks to, to finish ODF 103. That's why I became an editor and the chair, and, and because there was wrong, uh, things wrong with the HTML um, and the default extraction and um, different various things. And these seven, weeks I'm somehow missing now for, and I planned earlier to, to do a release for 0 0.9, which is basically done, but I got problems with um, the markdown to HTML generation of the Apache, just to mention. Okay. So, but then there should be in 1.0 very quickly afterwards, which is, which embraces all the stuff that both have funded. And then very quickly afterwards, it's 2.0, which embraces ODF 103, because unfortunately, because we're generating at the moment, there can only be one model, and this is either based on 102 or 103. And unfortunately, the specification does not um, define something like changes between these versions, which are which might come up in the future. So, are there any questions? Yes, science. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> nice to to see you. It would be even better to 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 drink. Uh, for science or go for science projects <laughs> thanks yes so um so i will get in contact on the dev list um as soon as i've done the releases and, and did this work um i think this is my first priority now to to do the releases aside of finishing the the odf um specification 103 but this is just voting next monday there's uh, there will be vote to that is being a uh, formal only one or three specification or something um i'm not firm in this wording yet but um but then i i i, I try to to I, i'm going to implement or uh, release one or zero one of, um yeah zero dot nine one or zero and two dot zero which is basically the same thing in one or three generated with a few enhancements okay and Yes, and then I'm I'm looking forward to to get in contact um, with the QA team if 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 there's any way to um, um, with the, if there's synergies between the ODF DOM from the to, uh, TDF and um, LibreOffice. Yes, I just realized that. Hi, Michael. He joined a little late. Some problems here. Okay. Um, yes. Um, I put the slides online and I will, of course, put some... Um, oh, this is something I, I forgot. Because I've got problems uh, with uh, Markdown and GitHub Markdown and I put, spend a lot of time and I fell in love with Swings, which is not a science project. It's uh, it's yet another Markdown, but it's made for... Um, I think it's for Python, right? And I saw the MongoDB, uh, which is a wonderful um, front-end. I, and I'm going to test this and um, maybe we can have synergies there as well. And um, yes, but I write this on the list. I'm not f uh, done yet. I guess yes. If there's is there any question, do you hear me? <laughs> we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Come on. <laughs> any question? What? What well, the science? I didn't understand. Yeah. Okay. 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 So um, so no further questions. I guess I give room. Next, the next is um, about to start now. It's me. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye, Svante. And if you can um, stop sharing your yeah, screen. I try, I try. Where is it? Give me... Uh, there should be a button in the bottom left of the Jitsi window. 
There we go. And now, hopefully, all being well, I can share 